Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Strike webinar on the OI Open Interest. Uh, the speaker for today is Mr. Jay Vora. Jay Vora is a market analyst at India Charts. Uh, you know, he'll be going through the webinar. The format is very simple. The first 45 minutes will be his explanation, and then and then we'll be opening up for the Q and A. Okay, so Jay. Uh, you can share your screen and you can start. Yeah, sure. So I'll quickly share my screen. So first of all, good morning and thanks a lot for joining. Uh, so today in this webinar, we'll be covering, the, I mean, like how to identify the medium term tops uh, and bottoms through uh, the open interest and, uh, and uh, with that, we'll be learning, uh, a concept of basically phases of OI built up. Okay. So Jay, Jay, sorry to interrupt. If you can go on a light version, please. Okay. Yeah, sure. So before Jay starts, uh, one more thing is if you have not started using strike, okay, this is the right time, you know, just go to web.strike.money and sign up and start using the tool. You get a free trial also. So start using it right now, web.strike.money. Please note it works only on the desktop and laptop and it is not mobile supportive as of now. We don't have a mobile app. So please do set, uh, use uh, the tool on your laptop or desktop. I'll be sending in the chat the link. You can all create an account and start using web.strike.money. Thank you, Jay. You can kickstart. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so the way we'll approach uh, for this webinar is that firstly, I'll just uh, brief you about what the open interest is, what is, what are the different types of OI built up. Then we'll go on to the concept of uh, the phases of open interest. And later on, uh, we'll learn how to identify uh, the tops and the bottoms. Okay. Uh, so roughly we'll take say around 45 minutes to 50 minutes. And, and later on, we'll have a Q and A session where uh, you know you can clarify all your doubts right so firstly uh what is open interest so open interest is like say if i and uh if i am a buyer of say infosys okay and say chavan is a seller of infosys so that means we get into a contract and and that basically means that there is one uh open interest that is outstanding that is one trade that is outstanding right so, so that way open interest is nothing but the number of contracts or the shares that are outstanding. Okay. So now what happens is that in a company, because there are, uh, I mean, uh, because we have this concept of ban and all, so there is only certain open interest that a stock or an index, uh, a stock can reach basically. Okay. So the moment it reaches there, uh, you know, that's where uh, it's like a limit to that open interest and, and eventually uh, squaring off needs to be required uh, because the limit has been hit. Okay. So this sort of behavior uh, tends to lead a lot of, uh, you know, important tops and bottoms, uh, especially when we reach the extreme. Okay. Now, uh, you know, just to save time, uh, I have created, you know, few images. So first to, uh, to say what are the different types of built up. So it is like, uh, so there are four uh, built ups that are usually seen. That is long built up, short built up, uh, short covering and long unwinding. So firstly, what is long built up? So when the prices rise higher and the open interest rise higher, Okay, so consider volume as very similar. To, uh, I mean, consider open interest as very similar to volumes, right? So when the prices are rising higher and the open interest is rising higher, it is normally a long built up, and the interpretation of that is bullish because that means people are, uh, you know, bullish about that stock and they expect the prices to rise higher. Now, if the prices go higher, but the open interest goes down, okay. That means that probably people were short in the stock earlier. Okay. And those stock, I mean, those shorts are getting covered and that is why you are seeing a short covering rally, which is leading to the price rising higher. 
okay and and that is why the observation that we see is that it is short covering and the interpretation of that is bullish because the prices rise higher now the third type is short built up now that happens when the prices go down and the open interest rises higher okay so that is short built up that is because uh, people are trying to short the stock and because of that shorting the prices are going down okay and the interpretation of that is bearish now what happens is that if there are a lot of long in the market okay and people are very enthusiastic about that stock so what happens is that it might end up reaching a limit uh towards the max upside uh, level okay so what would happen is that it would lead to the unwinding of the long position and the unwinding of long position will put the effect on the prices which will be on the downside and and that's why the interpretation of that is bearish okay so so just to quickly uh, summarize once again when the prices go up open interest go up it is a long built up when the prices go down and the open interest goes up it is a short built up when the prices go up and when the open interest goes down it is short covering and when the prices go down and the open interest go, uh, goes down it is long unwinding okay now once you have understood this you know uh, it so then you know there is something called as phases of open uh, uh, phases of oi beta now in this typically what happens is that you know this goes through a cycle okay so it is basically you enter from phase 1 to phase 2 then you enter in phase 3 phase 4 and so on okay so the order need not be 1 2 3 4 i mean it can be anything like supposingly if if the stock has started from here then this is how the cycle will be okay and it would be the other way around like if the stock has started from a long built up only okay then it will be this phase which i uh, mentioned initially so see what happens is that it, when a person is long on the i mean when the crowd is long on that stock okay they would typically trade uh, i mean this will pu push the prices higher and the open interest will keep rising higher okay and that would mean that there is a long built up that is so this is price is going higher open interest is going higher okay which means that there is a long built up that is happening over here now when there is a lot of optimism uh, that is seen you know eventually what happens is that oi reaches a point which is extremely high okay and it cannot rise higher further so what it tends to do is that the long uh, the people who are long you know they tend to unwind their position okay which means that it will put a downward pressure on the prices and because the people who are long over here okay and they start seeing the prices down you know they will start covering their positions as well which will also lead to open interest going down right and then uh, and see what happens is that over here there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of optimism which is there okay then when we get to the second phase of long unwinding that's where people realize that uh, you know it is not so optimistic as people are thinking and that is why they start cutting their position okay what eventually happens is that uh, i mean because this is a cycle so you know we will always have this boom and burst right so then people rea realizes that you know whatever optimism was over here was way too much okay now that people have cashed out their positions in the long they actually start shorting the stock okay and this is what leads to prices going down and oi rising higher once again now again what happens is that because people tend to uh, you know trade in the direction of the stock 
what eventually happens is that there is a herd mentality like everyone is telling you know this stock is bad uh, and it is likely to go down so so what happens is that uh, the herd builds up and 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 what eventually happens is that the open interest reaches that point you know where it is extremely high and and normally either on the upside or on the downside whenever the open interest is very high and which means people are in the direction of that trend uh, i mean people are in one direction normally an opposite is likely to happen in the days or the weeks to come okay so so that's where what eventually happens in short build up is that open interest reaches at such a level that beyond that it cannot increase which means that now the position needs to be cut okay and that usually leads to prices rising higher and open interest going lower okay and then once again the cycle starts again because over year you know people would have shorted so much that uh, you know they eventually have to cover and then later on they realize that you know the things are not that bad as it was looking earlier and they once again start building long position and this cycle keeps on going again and again and again okay so for you as a trader or an investor okay so firstly for you as a investor the most important point for you to catch would be around this point you know when the stock is starting its sh short covering phase which means that at the end of short built up phase when we are transitioning to this phase you know this is where the real opportunity comes because in in the short covering rally is where you know you get a runaway rally sort of uh, uh, movement in the stock it's in the long build up when people fairly recognize that uh, you know there were too many shorts and that's why the short covering was happening so the pace of the up move in the long build up is not that great okay so a bigger money is made when we try to catch the stock when there is a lot of short and those shorts are going to be covered okay and obviously for the traders you know you can you can i mean be on both the sides so especially you know catching this phase or this phase which means that eventually there is there is going to be a long build up okay and and if there is a lot of long which is there okay so you have to catch in this phase because in long unwinding the prices will go down and eventually people will realize and they when they short then that's again the prices will go down okay so traders can can uh, you know use two ways so either if they want to buy if they want to buy they would want to catch this phase so that they are able to enjoy the short covering phase as well as the long built up phase and uh, traders who want to make money on the short they have to catch you know this point long unwinding where they'll be able to enjoy the uh, the prices going down due to long unwinding and the and the short built up phase where again the prices are going to go lower okay now this was the theoretical part right so let us actually understand with a live example now before going to the live example there is one thing uh, that i want to clarify that you know we usually don't see it like it is not like a one to one correlation okay like today if the stock has gone up and the open interest has gone up then it is long built up i mean we need not necessarily see in that context but we have to look at it from a ten, trend perspective so say uh, if a broader trend is rising higher and the open interest is rising higher that means that possibly there is a long build up that has taken place okay but as i actually show you uh, you know the examples most of the scenarios will be of this only okay because what happens is that when uh, i mean people probably get too excited for shorting and 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 because you know in shorts actually there is a very sharp decline that we see you no know, normally people want to 
do this only okay and what happens is that if the prices go down if the prices don't go down eventually it leads to short covering so most of the time you end up seeing the stock in this phase only okay so so let's look at some of the examples okay so i have tried to cover many variation to this uh now one important thing to note is that open interest itself will not uh, you know be very useful for you to understand the broader trend you need to have an understanding of what the stock's actual trend is from a medium to long term perspective and even better confirmation would be if there is some index that is associated to that stock okay so say for example if uh, if the pharma sector is breaking out out of say 6 7 years of consolidation there is a very good chance that dr reddy sun pharma uh, cipla and all those kind of stocks are going to do well uh, in the medium term because there is a longer term breakout that we have seen right so oi interpretation should be kept in that context okay see there could be many ways of understanding uh, i mean doing the oi interpretation okay one would be a very bottom up approach where you forget what the index is doing and you just keep a bottom up approach and you see a stock and you try to identify in which phase the stock is okay the other part is that you have a top down approach and frankly i feel that the top down approach is a lot better because when a broader index okay uh, say for example uh, psc index or uh, say psu bank index you know if they are in an uptrend and then within the stocks we are able to find you know such kind of setups okay where there is a lot of short build up and then there is a likely chance of short covering okay and because the broader index of uh, i mean so say for example this is a sbi stock okay just an example so over here there is a lot of short, uh, there is a lot of short build up that has happened but overall psu bank index is in a longer term uptrend right so i would be more looking for a opportunity to buy sbi especially when there is a very high short build up and i see that uh, you know short build up may not uh sustain at higher levels okay so that will be the looking out point for me in sbi because i know that the broader index in this see uh, i mean the nifty psu bank is in a medium term long uh, i mean uptrend right so so that's how approach usually i take okay and most of the examples which i have taken are considering that in mind that uh, you know the medium term uptrend was intact and and that's where uh, you know uh, the stocks eventually saw the up move happening but uh, there are few uh, cases as well where i have tried to pick the individual stocks as well okay so once the explanation part is over feel free to ask the questions uh, we will discuss about uh, you know how to identify the trend and everything okay but i i hope that with this explanation which i give okay most of it uh, should be clear to you all okay and i request people not to draw on the screen so so first uh, so see open interest along with price breakout okay it will be a very good setup now what i mean by that is that say at the top end side it is the price action at the bottom end it is the oi right so say if the prices are in a range and if the prices break out okay and the open interest is in a range and even open interest breaks out with the prices that is a very good setup and that usually indicates that people are into this phase okay and the long built up that we are seeing is due to people participating in the stock and creating position leading to higher open interest now when we are in this phase okay long built up phase so normally uh, i mean people would think uh, you know like i mentioned over here that you should be trying to 
you know get into this phase because this is where uh, you get a very good up move okay and in this long built up phase what may typically happen is that the stock will go up then there will be a cool off then it will go up then there will be a cool off so even in oi you will see something like this happening okay but most of the time what people try to do is that because the up move from the short covering has been so quick okay they are not really able to take that up move so even if there is a small correction they will try to short it okay and eventually that short covering only leads to the up move okay so that is why i said that in most of the examples that i will be showing you know you will end up seeing this only that you know we are enter we i mean we are hovering within this phase only i mean once there has been a major short covering that has happened okay say this rise has been majorly due to short covering then later on what will happen is that people will try to build some short over here and there will be excess optimism and and that will be covered over here and people will again short okay they will again short and they will be maximum short at the lowest point and then again the short covering will lead to an up move so that is how typically you will see mini cycles over here okay in an uptrend basically so it is very important to understand that if there is a strong price breakout and an oi breakout then it would work out very well okay the other typical example that you would see that the prices have gone down way too much and the open interest is now at the highest you know probably i mean it would be the highest till date or it would be like at a you know previous highs say in 2015 if it 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 would have made a high so you would see the stocks you know again reaching those highs and uh, basically telling you that the open interest has kind of reached is its max position and over here now the open interest needs to be reversed which means that there is a lot of short that is there in the system so once the oi keeps coming down you will eventually end up seeing a short covering in the prices okay but like i said it is also very important to understand how the trend of the stock is from a medium to long term perspective okay so with that we will uh, try to look at some examples so before that uh, you know going to go to the oi analysis more, uh, you know screen at the left you know you have to click the second button which is analyze from there you have to go to futures and there you have to go to open interest page okay in this open interest page what we have done is that we have actually given a continuous price chart okay which means that uh, all the futures ka one month ka price you know we have connected it and we have tried to create a long term chart of that okay and and below that would obviously be the open interest okay so uh, in in stocks like say ongc and all you would see that the history is lot more that is because they have been uh, you know trading ever since uh, from 2012 we have the data and they have been trading uh, you know in those data since then so you know i think we have made a lot of efforts to clean the data as well because uh, you know there are many split bonuses and all those of things that have happened and we have uh, you know adjusted everything for the last 12 years okay so when you look at the open interest from a, a i mean uh, from this perspective you will you will understand that if the open interest is reaching at a very high point you know you have to be careful because there could be consensus that could be building uh, in the direction of which the price is heading and normally an opposite thing is likely to happen so so firstly you know i'll talk about the price and the volume breakout okay you would see a stock like gale okay where what had happened was that you know the stock was trading in a range as you can see over here okay eventually what led was a breakout on the upside okay and the the breakout led to the up move in the price and also because people participated in this 
and this led to a surge in the open interest as well okay now to just to give you a context okay in the past there is a i mean looking at this chart you know it seems like the that the open interest has a runway to go up to this point okay so that would mean that you know until uh, this point may not be reached okay it, it is not necessary that you know there is way to optimism in the stock and in fact most of the time what happens is that uh you know expiries come eventually people uh you know do square off their position and they don't really roll over and that will uh you know lead to some downward uh i mean spike in the open interest and then again people will start building long so so you know such type of things will keep happening over here as well and and that will give a relatively good runway for the stock to go on the upside okay now the things where you need to be a little careful okay is that you got to uh, you know understand how to do the trend analysis as well and normally i prefer you know looking at the moving averages because once the trend starts picking up there will be certain moving averages will not which will not be broken on the downside okay and typically we follow the 20 average and the 40 average and we try to see that the stock is following which moving average on which time frame okay now uh, you know just to uh, now there might be many people who may not understand what is uh, you know i mean how are the technicals of that stock and so on so that is why uh, you know if you go in the global search and say if you type gale okay and you go to the charts so there is uh, i mean this is our proprietary setup that we usually follow uh, you know i can't explain you the rohit momentum right now but just to give you a brief uh, this is more like an macd okay and but it is a faster version of macd and you will typically see a uh, a uh, you know a, a very uh, fast crossover before the trend is actually starting okay so so that's where you know you can actually go to the rohit setup and you can uh, you can find this at the left hand side what you see is a grid and over here we have given hourly daily weekly monthly trends so the so basically see if you do the daily chart then it will tell you that the rmi is in sell but the down but based on the downtrend i mean downtrend it is up if you go on the weekly chart you will know that the medium term trend is bullish okay and then again if you want to go i mean if you go to the mid uh, the monthly chart you will understand that the long term uh, you know trend is also good so what it means is that when your weekly and your monthly trend is bullish there can be a case that on a daily chart you know there can be some bit of correction but uh, you know a lot more beneficial idea would be to try to uh, you know think when the correction is going to end and then again look out uh, for the up move so so you know just to give you a brief what we usually try to do is that we wait patiently for the for our proprietary indicator that is the rohit momentum indicator to come back to the zero line and once it gives a bullish crossover you know that's where we try to find out uh, if there is a good buying opportunity or no okay so that being the case i mean we need to firstly confirm what the higher time frame trend is right and and that's where then we try to time on the lower time frame so so if someone has a time horizon of just few days then they can probably use the hourly chart as well because you know in every chart you will have a uh, you know same sort of uh, characteristics where the RMI will go back towards the zero line and it will again give a bullish crossover. It will go back to zero line and it will again give a bullish crossover. And that way it will keep doing the cycles. Okay. So now, like I said, uh, you know, coming back to what we were discussing earlier, which is the price volume breakout. And here, when you see the price volume breakout, you can see that Gale has given a nice breakout uh you know from the open interest and the prices are also rising higher and see what happens is that if a stock 
is in a you know sideways sort of zone for a very very long time usually whenever the breakouts occur uh, the uptrend is not likely to end in one month or two months okay it will keep going on so you will keep getting opportunities on the way down and 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 you know that's where uh, open interest will sort of help you to uh, time whether uh, whether there is a excess optimism or not now see it can happen that say gale rises over here and there is excess optimism over here and the open interest reaches this point what it would simply mean is that now there is a lot of long built up that has been there in the stock and it needs to see a cool off okay in which case what you would end up seeing is that you know prices are going down and the open interest is falling okay then it again comes to a point that probably you know you will have a trend line support or uh, you know some technical support over here in the form of averages or something okay and then again the stock will start picking up so usually that is how uh, it happens when there is a multi year breakout and a multi year trend up move is expected now something similar can also be seen in say a stock like ongc right because over year also you can see that many a times it is trying to reach this upper end okay and what later on we are seeing is some pull off from there and and it leads to minor bit of correction and once again it starts picking up then once it again hits that euphoric phase uh, i mean there there comes uh, a cool off and then it keeps rising higher right but in an overall context now like i mentioned earlier that you need to have the trend analysis uh, you know done that is because when you see the medium term structure okay medium to long term structure what you actually see is an inverse hns happening right and and like i told you i usually try and do the top down approach okay it helps because now see uh, this is the psu index okay you can see that i have marked over your blue lines now blue lines is nothing but you know this used to be a very strong resistance area for the psu index okay i mean this was supposed to be a very strong resistance uh, area but what has happened is that there has been a massive breakout out uh, after say this is 200 2008 and this breakout had occurred say in 2023 so almost a 15 year breakout has occurred in psu index okay and even uh, i mean people who follow us on india charts they would know that you know we have been uh, very bullish on this index so now what has happened is that uh, you know there has there is a lot, lot of optimism over here because you can see the monthly rsi is and the weekly rsi is you know reaching that 90 sort of mark so at some point of time you know there can be some bit of pullback but then the stocks which have given the breakout you know usually they will end up seeing long unwinding okay and they will again come back towards the uh, lower end of its open interest and from there you know once again uh, there will be a long build up and and this sort of series i think will keep happening you know until the up move uh, which uh you know the stock might probably want to do from a medium term perspective until that doesn't happen it will keep continuing this okay and that's where the opportunity is and like i said uh, that's where you know i try to follow the top down approach because uh, it it gives me sort of a confirmation that if the index is doing well okay and say gale and ongc are a heavy uh, i mean are a heavy weights in uh, pse index okay so most likely even they are going to do well and the prices and the price breakout that you are seeing in gale and ongc that might be real and uh, they should be doing well in the uh, medium term perspective now you know just a disclaimer uh, this is not uh, any sort of recommendation what we are actually trying to do is just to learn things from an educational purpose 
and how do we actually see things uh, in the real time okay and how we try to do the analysis so now these are you know like few of the examples which which i have taken and uh, you know which might probably make sense to discuss because we are seeing such kind of setups over there so a more uh, you know like bullish outcome for the ongc could also be that the open interest breaks breaks out and it reaches you know at extreme over here and that would tell you that there could be a peak of optimism in ongc which may eventually lead to you know some sort of a pullback from uh, you know say few days to few weeks as well which will eventually lead to uh, open interest coming down and then you know once again you will see a surge in open interest and you will see a surge in price and that's how uh, you will see it happening now uh, you know just to give you a sense such sort of uh, pattern used to occur in muthut at least prior to 2020 okay where you can see over here that uh, the oi used to be in a range okay then there was this oi breakout that we had seen somewhere around this point there was a surge in oi there was excess optimism due to covid you know most of the i mean people who were overly enthusiastic over here they ended up covering the shorts oi came back towards the normal level and then uh, whenever there was a price surge there used to be oi surge okay and it was only around this part okay where you actually saw the oi rising higher to a, a new all time high level which it had never seen in the past okay and this low was associated with a very high uh, uh, you know surge in open interest over here okay eventually what happened was there was a very powerful short covering rally which we have seen and and now also what we are seeing is actually somewhat this only that wait let me zoom in so you will see this only that see at the top the oi is go going down then people are trying to short once again but again the prices are rising higher and they are and they are being forced to cover okay so most of the time you will see you know these sort of things happening because people are usually in disbelief when they see such a strong up move okay and they think that the prices are going to go down they are going to go down and and then in the interim they try shorting but it doesn't work and they eventually are forced to cover okay and it is only in the euphoric phase that you will see that uh, the open interest is rising higher towards a very uh, you know uh, very abnormal level or it you can say could be its previous high as well or it could be a new range altogether and then uh, that would lead that excess optimism would lead to say some kind of major up move that is getting completed and then you get a uh, sharp corrections and and that's where you know that entire cycle once again comes into play where uh, you know then you start building short positions i mean then you start covering your long and uh, longs and then you start building your short positions okay which we discussed uh, at the start so so you know there are few stocks that would have this tendency basically to rise higher when the open interest is rising higher and the open interest gets covered when the prices go down okay now uh, now there can be sometimes an abnormal surge in the uh, open interest okay which actually was observed in say bank nifty index and you could see this abnormal surge around this point you know where the prices were making lower lows and the bank nifty had reached to a point okay where the open interest was very high okay eventually what it led was a big short covering rally that followed and then after uh, you know we are seeing uh, the these kind of moves that are happening like you know at shorting the open interest surges and then again we see unwinding of that and the prices rise higher and so on right so so such spiky sort of things also tend to happen now now like i like i told you uh, even for ongc 
when the prices are rising higher, say something like this, you would typically see OI, you know, something like this also happening. Now the same is true for the downward, uh, I mean, for the stocks, which are in a bear market as well. So say, for example, Sun Pharma. Okay. When you look at the history over here, Yeah. So when you look at the history over here, see, imagine what was the open interest that used to be in Sun Pharma. Okay. And, and what used to happen was that, uh, you know, there used to be this long phase where, wherein there was a surge of open interest, then it used to go down and, uh, you know, people used to try and do some shorting over here and then there should be short covering rally. Then again, there is long unwinding. Then there is a then there is a long built up over here, and so on. So these all things used to happen until the point where you actually see the surge of open interest. You know exactly over here. I mean, when there was, uh, I think, uh, the the promoter of Randback C, uh, which was going to uh, sell the stake in Sun Pharma because then uh, I think Sun Pharma and uh, Randback C had merged. I mean, uh, Sun Pharma had taken over. So what led was a huge spike in open interest. Now, see what happens is that when there is a huge spike in open interest, all the people are in that direction. Okay, and they are expecting the prices to go down. So typically, what you would see is a counter trend rally that would follow that would probably throw the weak hands uh, out from the system and and then again you might see the continuation of that uh, trend and and you know at at this point of time see what happens is that there is maximum part participation from the people and that's why you see a huge surge in open interest but then as it uh, you know like keeps going down so you would also see that majorly people who would have been long over here as well, they will also start to unwind because there are many people there in the market, you know, who simply buys the stock and they keep rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. Okay. So, so, you know, when a medium term reversal tends to happen, you know, you would end up seeing, uh, you know, these sort of patterns. And now what you see over here is opposite of what we see in the short belt up, right? So what you see over here is that, see, again, there is a surge in open interest. Okay. And then, then when we are seeing a pullback rally, this shorts get covered. And once again, they try and they short and, and you can see at this bottom, the, the, the shorting was at the peak. And, you know, there were many uh, news of uh, scams happening in Sun Pharma and so on. But uh, when we when we look at the open interest part, you know, you would understand that the open interest is at such a high level that maybe, uh, you know, a lot of people are shorts over here and beyond a point open interest cannot surge uh, because uh, the stocks may also end up going to ban and all those things. So what eventually happened was a big short covering rally that we saw in Sun Pharma. Okay. And then there have been periods of, uh, I mean, when I actually bring you very closer to, to, you know, the surge in open interest part, you would observe that in the shorting times, okay, there used to be a surge in open interest, like you see over here, you know, this was the small phase, but you would see a surge of open interest. And then when the up move started, they cover their shorts. And, and, and that is what they, it keeps happening because people are not able to digest that this kind of up move can happen in a stock. And, uh, you know, this stock is good for more. They think that the stock ka bus ho gaya upper mein, now it is going to short and they try to play for that 20, 30, 40 bucks. And, uh, you know, they end up getting trapped and they end up getting screwed. So we reach to a point. Okay. Then this is like a normalization of OI and, you know, also coming back uh, towards what it used to be earlier. And that's where then we end up seeing the trend of the stock. Okay. Now such low open interest would mean that people are neutral on the stock. Okay. 
such low readings would mean that people are neutral on the stock and you will have to see the direction in which the open interest is increasing you know say for example over here see over here as well the open interest was low now again what happened was that people were trying to short okay which led to a short covering rally and then eventually there was an excess long over here uh, i mean excess optimism over here which again got corrected and and we and we saw those cycles uh, you know playing out because earlier it was a uh, sh short covering then long built up then long unwinding and people so far they haven't shorted yet okay but but this has largely been long unwinding with in between uh, you know stock seeing surge in the open interest while there are some shorting that is happening and then again those shorts get covered and the uh, prices rise higher now at this point of time you know there can be two interpretation that can be made and that is that you know people are probably losing interest in the stock and that is why uh, you know they are not building the long position now that can be true okay that can be true and that is where i uh, mentioned earlier that you also have to do a kind of a top down analysis so if i do this top down analysis right and if i say and if i see the nifty pharma index so that is actually breaking out of a big cup and handle sort of pattern after 6 7 years right so that would mean that despite you seeing such a low interest it could be possible that maybe you know you might not see a, a lot of excitement from sun pharma so what may keep happening periodically is that it will rise higher then again when it corrects the open interest will surge and again when it sees the uh, up move uh, you know continuing you will see the open interest going down and that way it may end up just forming you know some sort of range and ultimately when the up move is complete you know that's where you will see a surge in open interest and you may end up seeing uh, you know decline in the prices as well so that is how normally happens and that is why you would notice that in any stock you would see a surge of open interest to the highest point mostly when the stock is at the bottom okay because people are shorting that stock left right and center and they think that the company might end up getting to zero and they may end up uh, you know making good money or i mean not literally zero but the stock will uh, end up tanking a lot and they would end up making good money because usually uh, you know in shorts you would get a very fast return uh, if your calls are right okay but typically uh, you know what it has been seen in the past as well that when the shorts are at maximum okay that's where there is a bigger risk of a medium to long term reversal so that is why particularly i look for uh, you know stocks where the open interest is probably at the highest ever since uh, you know it has uh, started trading and the sentiment should be very bad towards that stock now the only thing is that the judgment that you have to make is that that uh, the stock isn't a fraud one and it is not going to zero because if it is if that is the case then that, then that would be the only time that you know you would get this exception that you know despite high open interest the prices keep falling because there is actually a scam in this company but if all things being normal and and you know market will typically tend to portray such pictures at the bottom that uh, you know this company is a fraud and uh, and all those things but you know somewhere you would need to have that conviction or faith and and if not anything you know at least even if you wait for a price breakout or something like that or a moving average breakout say for example in this case you know a breakout over year or over year i mean from these highs you know even that would be fine if you don't want to really catch a falling knife okay so uh, so so yes so that is how you know one way you can actually uh, you know try to time the large cap uh, the uh, well run companies you know especially when there is a huge short build up now something similar i had also seen in bharti airtel you know around this phase okay where the open interest was very high 
Okay, eventually what it led was a, a short covering rally and and you see that the open interest are no, now normalizing and it is coming back towards, uh, you know, a more normal level, which it used to be in the past. Okay. Be, like I said, you know, finding out the stocks where the open interest are very high would be a good rewarding thing, especially if you hold it for next few, uh, few months or maybe even couple of years, you know, you would usually tend to see a very good rally because, uh, you know, like everyone would know that, you know, there, there was a lot of talk that there would be pricing pressure and, you know, uh, Bharti Etel has such a big debt. It may even end up going burst, like how Vodafone idea did and, uh, and so on. But, uh, you know, these are all good, uh, you know, businesses, which have been through many, many different phases. So, you know, one would have to take that leap of faith and, uh, and with the help of derivatives data, you would actually come to know where the actual panic is. Okay. And that's where you can, uh, you know, probably be contrarian and make money out of it. Now there are few stocks, you know, which have beautifully followed the, uh, the phases, which I mentioned. And uh, so, so in all the, in all these sort of uh, stocks, which I mentioned to you till now, you know, there we have seen a major short covering, but we haven't really seen a major long build up, right? But if you see a stock like MCX, okay. So over here, what had happened was that it got relisted, I think somewhere in 2022 or so. So we, uh, so over here, when the stock was going down again, there was a surge in open interest. And then when the prices rose higher, you know, the open interest kept, kept coming down and it was at this point. Okay. Which was an inflection point because over here as well, there was a surge in open interest and what followed by that was a short covering rally. And once this range broke on the upside, okay. Uh, especially price wise, you know, that's where you eventually saw a surge in open interest and, and, and see, look, like I said over here, there will be phases when, when there will be a lot of optimism that you would see, and that would lead to OI correction as well. Okay. But eventually you would see the prices rising higher and the open interest rising higher. So had you caught at this point, okay, where the open interest was very high, uh, you it would be, uh, you know, very much rewarding from a medium to long-term perspective, because that's where, you know, the optimism, I mean, the pessimism is at its peak and later on, you know, due to some or the other thing, the cycle turns and the stock, uh, actually starts doing well stock or the sector, uh, they actually start doing very well. Okay. The other one, uh, you know, which we had sort of discussed when we were in our Goa event, uh, which we uh, end up having every year was that, see, this is a classic case of a confusion between the bull and the bear. Okay. Because what you see over here, wait, let me zoom in and show you the exact, see, this was the point where the open interest started surging. Okay. That means people were, st you know, starting to go long. But then in this correction, you further saw open interest going up. Okay. You, you further saw open interest going up, you know, it was around this phase. Now this means that there is a tug of war between the bulls, which have went long over here and the bears, which have uh, went uh, short in, in this particular phase. And what then actually happened was when there was a break of the previous high, and, and, uh, you know, let me show you over here as well. See this, this was the point. Okay. Where there was a minor pullback. Okay. And people did try to short a bit over here because you could see a little surge in open interest, but what followed by was a big short covering rally that eventually played out. And, you know, the stock seems to be rising higher. Now this was again, uh, you know, why I had discussed about this talk was that every 
every PSU stock was rising during this phase. Okay. And we had actually, I mean, while we were discussing, uh, it was somewhere in this phase. Okay. Which means that the open interest was very high over here. Okay. And there was this tug of war between the bulls and the bears that was happening. But at the same time, when you see the PSE index, okay, sorry, that is the PSU index when you see. So what I'm seeing right now is a BSC PSU index. It was somewhere in the month of October. Okay. And it was somewhere over year. And what we knew was that there is a multi-year breakout that has occurred. So yes, sure. There was a chance that it could have retested its breakout point. But till the time it was above the averages, uh, you know, it looked like that it may uh, see one more new leg on the upside. And we also do Elliott wave counting. So based on that as well, it was showing us that there could be one more leg on the upside. Now I was trying to actually find stocks which have not participated and where the shots were very high. Okay. So, so this was the stock which I got and eventually what followed was a, a big up move. Uh, that eventually, uh, you know, played out and the stock rallied and, and, you know, it's a, a, and, and also you would notice that at this point of time, you know, all the narrative was that, uh, election is coming, they will be forced to cut price and they will be in losses and they will again start making losses. So when such type of new starts coming in and when you feel that the, uh, you know, bad news could probably be in the stock. You know, that's where uh, even a hint of a positive surprise. So what eventually happened was that crude, uh, you know, fell from 90 to 70 and that fueled the rally uh, in all the OMCs. So this was uh, another kind of example, you know, where I saw that sometimes there can be that confusion in the market, you know, where uh, it's a tug of war between the bulls and the bears. But if you have a view on the broader index, okay, and, and that to you, if it is looking good, then it could be uh, very rewarding to take risk because you are trading in the direction of that uh, larger trend. Okay. So somewhere these all things will eventually play out because I think everyone would have known till that point of time that, uh, you know, PSUs are value stocks because the dividend yields are say six, seven, eight, ten percent and you know some or the other day they may turn around but the only point was that when would they turn around is something that uh, you know that was not known and a bit of patience was was required but when you see open interest you know surging to such high levels it kind of tells you that you know a bigger movement on either side is going to come and you need to be watchful okay so, uh, you know, these were some of the theoretical parts. Now I will, I will leave you with, you know, some of the stocks where I am presently seeing such things happening. Okay. And, and probably, and probably, you know, you can track such stocks and you will see how eventually the move unfolds. So like we are seeing right now that, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, pesticides, herbicides sort of uh, sector is in a bad shape. And there is a lot of pessimism that you see in this sector. Okay. But when you see the open interest, it is now around the highest point. Okay. And the prices are uh, at, uh, you know, say six, seven years low only. I mean, since six, seven years, this stock has done nothing. And we also know that there are very high concerns that, uh, you know, UPL has a big debt on its book and it can go burst. So the ingredients are all there for this to, for this stock to do well in the next 12 to uh, 18 months. But the only thing over here, what we don't have as of now is a price confirmation of a reversal. Okay. Now, uh, just to give you a context. If we see uh, many other stocks which are in this area, okay, like say Bayer Crop. So again, you know, one can argue that these are all Indian companies. They have uh, exposure in India only and so on. But when you see, uh, you know, stocks like Bayer Crop or so, where we have this monthly momentum indicator of RMI in bullish mode, 
when uh, there is other stocks, say Dhanuka aggregate tech. Okay, this has given a, a very big breakout from a, a medium term perspective. And there is a, a bullish crossover in RMI. You know, I would tend to think that if the sector is moving in that direction, probably eventually UPL may also start moving in that direction. But the only thing that we don't have right now, like I said, is a price confirmation of a reversal. Okay. So, so that is where, you know, all, uh, I mean, you know, such kind of stocks will be on my radar, but I would probably waiting. I, I will be probably waiting for a reversal to come by to, uh, you know, make a bet because, uh, you know, there can be a possibility. Like I said, we don't know till how high the open interest can go. Right. So it can very well happen that it might happen something like this. And you would see this happening. And what I'm presuming right now is the higher open interest may not really be the case and it may further go high. Right. But this would be surely one of the stock I would be keeping on my radar to see if there is a reversal playing out or no. Because when there is a big short covering rally that may happen, you know, it will be out of blue and people will be wondering why this short covering rally has happened. And only, you know, three, four months later, when the prices actually surpass above the high or so on, um, you know, that's where people will start uh, understanding why the up move has played out because uh, market tends to discount things much more earlier than what people do. Right. And, and, and see again with the risk that this company has a high debt. So the only way this company won't work is that if this actually, I mean, if they are actually not able to service the debt and they go burst, then, you know, this theory may not really work. But like I said earlier as well, you know, in bad times is when you end up seeing all those theories uh, and, uh, uh, you know, market commentary and, and you sometimes need to have a leap of faith. And that leap of faith is probably the time when you do when the prices, you know, break above the previous high or like I said over here, you know, people who don't follow technicals, uh, you know, they, they can look over here and they can, and, and they can wait for the prices to move over above the averages and wait for the larger trend to also turn because see in all this while you can see that the monthly momentum indicator has been negative. So if the monthly momentum indicator turns positive and, uh, you know, the stock sort of breaks above the averages, that would be the point that, uh, you know, I would be really interested to, uh, you know, see what the stock is doing because of the lot of uh, pessimism that you see now, you know, people may say that ye 650 wala, I mean, 555 wala, 670 ho jayega. should we then catch only then? I mean, that is something, uh, it's a personal approach, but, uh, you know, because I follow technicals more, I would want that technically it should be out of the downtrend in all the time frames. So that's where I would be a lot more comfortable, uh, you know, entering into the stock. So. So see, this is what my approach will be. Okay. And, and like I said, uh, once again, a disclaimer, I mean, this is not a stock recommendation, but, uh, but this is how I view things and this is how I analyze. And, uh, with that, I mean, I'm done with the presentation and I'm happy to take up any questions, uh, if, if people have any. Okay, uh, you can raise your hands, those who are having doubts. Abhijit Ghosh. Yeah, good morning, Jay. Yeah, hi, good morning, Abhijit. Uh, Jay, there is one simple thing that I want to understand. When you say short built up, as you said that once you are selling one contract to Chavan, then the open interest is becoming one. Right. So short built up is equal, will always be equal to the long built up. Now the prices that are deciding who is winning, isn't it? Right. Correct. So uh, how can I say a less open interest uh, will be deciding the trend reversal? No, no, no. So I said that less open interest will be, would mean that people are now 
now either cashing out uh, from their position okay or they are neutral so if the low if there is a low interest uh, open interest over year say the stock has come over year okay and okay. then whichever side the open interest builds up and the prices start seeing you know in that direction that would be the direction in which you will think that the built up is happening it could be short or long but when the open interest come back towards its normal level it tells you that people are neutral on this stock and now you have to watch for the direction of the uh, trend okay jay there is one more thing that uh, that i particularly did with uh, hindustan copper hmm. if we can just open up the hindustan copper open interest chart sure yeah you just see when this uh, particular uh, this second up move from uh, somewhere around 130 range it right. shot up right just prior to that the open interest there it was a huge correction phase a long correction that occurred in uh, hindustan copper from some 170 odd levels to this uh, 94 and uh, 90 levels okay wait i'll i'll do the spot chart so over here we have i think it entered the fno only at a later stage it later I... somewhere around 2022 uh, uh, uh. okay now what what i was thinking and the way i saw the things because uh, i am invested in hindustan copper so i was observing the open interest chart also what i found that during the correction phase entire correction phase the open interest that was at a much uh, at a top level itself during that particular time right and uh, as per my marking three times i went wrong i again uh, bought in cash segment and hmm. i had to uh, you know hold that shares with me but i had believe in hindustan copper yeah. so i kept on investing right. and then i saw a huge surge in open interest so right. so, so this is what happened see uh, when it was newly interest uh, introduced in the stock people might have not uh, much interest over year okay okay so that is why you know you would have seen this flat sort of thing happening usually for me okay i am just telling from my perspective i would like to see the data okay in a newly listed stock i mean newly fno stock uh, i may i mean frankly i wouldn't have been able to judge it based on the open interest over year it was just that it is just that now i am seeing right now that the prices are moving higher and the open interest is rising higher okay which broadly means that people are going long in the stock okay so there is a long built up that is there now i will no, just, just 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 sorry to interrupt you yeah the way now i am interpreting it just tell me whether i am correct or wrong that okay. i am seeing that the open interest is building up and as okay. per my uh, wave counts if i find that uh, the structure is the up move is not complete few right. more legs are awaiting so every time i see a drop in uh, open interest i can and with a subsequent rise in the prices Correct. i will interpret it as short covering is taking place and again there is an opportunity as per my elliot wave counts the prices may further go up then i can do some trading in that particular thing Yes, yes, definitely. So, so see, over year, actually, there is not much short built up that is happening because even when you see in the corrective phase, okay, what okay. is happening is that the long, the people who are long, they seems to be cashing out, okay, and basically okay. the weak hands are getting out, and then once again when the prices are surging higher, the open interest is surging higher, okay. So, okay. so in this case, how I would actually take it is that. as long as the averages will be held in some of the time frame okay hmm. the trend is bullish over there if the averages gets broken on the uh, uh you know downside and downside. If, and if the open interest is very high okay that is long unwinding would take place at that point correct of. correct correct okay thank you jay thank you yeah, welcome Okay, Jay. 
uh, before we move ahead, if you can quickly show the application in two, uh, two minutes. You have just two minutes. Just quickly show what are all the tools we are having on Strike, please. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, so just to give you a brief about how we have designed the tool. I mean, it is in three phases that we have done it. It is discover, uh, analyze, and learn. So in discover, we basically have scanners. Uh, we have bulletin board. Uh, we have calendar and we have IPO. So in this, uh, the idea is that you just try and discover the stocks that you want to concentrate on. Okay. And analyze would be the phase where, uh, you know, you would end up getting a lot of insights about the stock and the data and how things are unfolding. And, and in that case, you know, heat maps, we have futures and options, stock indices. I mean, within stock indices, we have, uh, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of detailed analysis in the fundamentals as well, where we get a summary uh, valuations of last 10 years with the standard deviations. Uh, then we have the quarterly PNL, annual PNL, balance sheet, cash flow, financial ratios. And then you have uh, the technicals of the stock, volume and delivery, then futures, if at all that stock is in future, and bulletin board. So in this case, uh, whatever stocks are related to this, I mean, whatever news are related to the stocks, only that will come by. And then uh, apart from that, we have the sentiment indicators, uh, which I believe Rohit sir has taken, uh, you know, webinar once, you know, you can go to uh, the strike platform and know and get to know more about these indicators. In fact, we have also done a webinar on scanners as well, where we have covered, I think, the Rohit scanner and the Dow scanner. So Dow scanner is nothing but the higher high, higher low uh, concept and that we have been able to code and we have been able to show the chart as well. And uh, yeah, we have the FIDI data ratio charts. So ratio charts could be, uh, you know, very helpful from, uh, you know, either a pair trade perspective or if someone wants to switch a stock, uh, so that's where you know it can be very helpful to know the relative strength compared to the other stock. Okay, thank you. Uh, so those who have not used Strike, go to web.strike.money and sign up and start using it. It's available. Uh, you get a free trial and you can use it on your laptop and desktop. And please note that there is a lot of scanners options module coming up and also sector analysis. A lot of things are coming up, including uh, uh, very vast uh, uh, combo scanners and everything. So just hold on till then. Okay, the next question is from Nilesh Kumar Taylor. Nilesh Kumar ji, you can please ask your question. Nilesh ji. Okay, okay. No, he's not responding. So Jimmy, you can please unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jay, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on launching such a good software that reduces the entire effort of uh, arrived to a conclusion which is meaningful and actionable. Thank and you, using the you. same, I would like you to do a little job for me. I mean, it is very rude to say, but my view is that uh, the way you described Sun Pharma getting away from Renbaxi during 2015 and a lot of OI built up was there, but that was not going to percolate into a higher thrust. It actually made the stock prices fizzle out. Right. So now can you uh, find out innovative ways of finding, will the bank Nifty make a bigger high previous to the budget, I mean, run up to the budget at least, or has it already topped out based on your innovative parameters? So I uh, want to have, a, I want to have it examined only with the bias or will it make a new high or not? So, uh, I mean, see, uh, I cannot <laughs> really get into the specifics. Okay. I, uh, is it based on, based on the parameters at your disposal? I mean, yeah. which, which ingredient to use when, I mean, it's a wonderful tool, but for a personal season like you, who has been on a research desk for more than a decade, 
it will be an obvious choice but people like us who want to make the weapon of choice i mean there are many things in the software right now which should be the first go to tool to understand that right so i think the foremost thing is the basics you know that we have already discussed about i think uh, you know when we look at the daily weekly monthly okay mm -hmm. how the trend is I mean, that will sort of help you to understand, uh, you know, how the trend is. And now people uh, like, I think us who follow Elliott wave, you know, mm. if there is a five wave rise that we see mm. and uh, there is a pullback, then we be a little careful and mm. we be open to the idea that there can be a pullback that can be seen. But, mm. uh, you know, I mean, you have been, I don't know if you are a part of insiders or no, uh, but mm -hmm. If you read read about our work, so what we are essentially saying is that, you know, this is what is happening in the bank Nifty. Okay, so as long as the blue line, which is the forty day exponential average, doesn't break on the downside, there can be a possibility of a one more new high. Okay, but uh, I mean, it's 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 like a a, a bit of a confusing state because. If at all the 40 day exponential is held and yeah. get a positive bullish crossover, okay, mm. on the RMI. So mm. then there could be a case of a one more new high as well. Till then, mm. it's it's a thing that we are monitoring very closely. And probably, yeah. uh, you know, this trend line will sort of help us. So to understand. I mean, till the time this trend line is not broken on the upside, there could be a case that, you know, you just end up seeing a minor pullback, which turns out to be. It can be within a range bound between your, uh, the bottom uh, moving average blue line and the trend line that you've drawn in the above. Right, right, right. So it's in a tight range as of now. Right. So it's, it's a very tight call right now. Mm -hmm. And, and also, you know, you would be knowing about the sentiment indicators, you know, yes. that we have discussed in the past. And mm -hmm. where the FI is positioning, if they uh, reach to this, you know, this two mark, mm -hmm. uh, sort of, uh, you know, be, the index or the market, you know, sort of becomes a bit topish, right? Okay. So, so that's why it's a very tight call, and it's a call that you know we are. Uh, I mean, this is something that we are looking on an ongoing basis every day mm -hmm. to know if there could be one more new high or no. But it's a very tight call, Frank. But can we? But can we take the data of the last uh, 2019 uh, January data? Because right now we are not just any pre-budget rally; we, we are on a pre-election budget rally. No. So I'll tell you one thing. Okay, uh, this is very ingrained in my memory right now. So before COVID, okay. Yeah. Before just COVID happened, uh, you would notice that the nifty was making higher high mm. so this was i think till 20th jan but yes yes bank nifty had sort of topped out over year only mm, 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 so mm. now when i look at the bank nifty chart it had actually topped out over year only a month back to what mm. nifty did nifty just topped out somewhere around this point okay okay so in that sense, if you see, even now there is an intermarket divergence that we are seeing right now, right? Mm. That Nifty is making newer high, but the bank Nifty is not making newer high. Okay. Right. So, so fewer and fewer stocks are pulling it upwards and uh, it can lose momentum at any given point in time. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next up is, um, Vishesh. Yeah. So thanks, uh, Chawan, for giving me this opportunity. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, Ajay, uh, uh, great. Yeah, your uh, uh, presentation is excellent and uh, very, very uh, uh, conveying the meaning of uh, the beautiful uh, uh, this thing, software that you created. Thank you. I want to ask about Metropolis. Can you show the chart for Metropolis? So yeah, this is the one that has been. Yeah, yeah. So so, if you see in healthcare, a uh, lot of stocks are you know going up. The trend in the sector is actually up. 
but here we see that this particular stock has broken all the averages and gone down hmm. and now the put call ratio is very high uh, the oi positions are very high so okay. uh, can you uh, give me give us some ideas to what are your uh, this thing is study is telling see over your first thing in the first look what i see is that the previous high is not broken over here right absolutely and if i see in the past open interest has gone till this point so which yeah. means that the open interest might still have some more room to go on the upside yeah and, and because this is a newly listed stock i mean a uh, newly uh, listed stock in the fno okay. i actually don't know what the range is okay yeah. so can it go to 2.8 Two point, I mean three point five. That is something I don't know. But yeah. what I would be uh, really interested would be when the prices break above this point. Yeah. I would be very interested to see how the positioning is at this point. Okay. Or the other way would be if the expiry uh, happens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in couple of weeks, and we see a. Uh, fall in open interest that means that people who are probably holding short positions they are cashing out and yeah. they are now neutral on the stock oh so then if the prices start rising higher and the open interest starts rising higher then yeah. i would imagine that people are trying to go long in the stock and obviously the breakout point would be this but this is like an attempt to break out from the range yeah 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 and uh, the rs this thing rohit um, momentum is also sort of giving us uh, you can see it here so if you see daily it's in sell yeah weekly it is now turning into sell yeah weekly would probably be in sell okay it yeah. is not in sell but you can see that it's at the upper band and the resistance yeah. so we yeah. got to be a little careful and and mm -hmm. maybe this could be the confirmation point i feel i'm not oh. sure but uh, you know just at the first look uh, this is what my sense correct 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 yeah 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 so so, so the so the uh, major point is that you know the behavior that you might want to watch out for uh, on the open interest is that what is does when the open interest is over here yeah at all it reaches there or yeah. how the positioning of the participants are post the expiry yes 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 okay so there yeah. is actually one more screen uh, that uh, you know sort of helps you to scan because uh, uh, so far i was wondering that you know people didn't ask the question ye sab to theek hai hum dhoonde kaise wo batao <laughs> yeah absolutely this is the right question actually how do we know that it's rolling over it's going... yeah yeah so so one yeah. would be the roll over trends okay so so see this is something i i i mean i had told chavan that you know we'll keep a separate sessions for uh, session for this one because because, OI build up, because understanding oi built up itself is a big task i mean you know many of the beginners may not be able to understand if we rush it okay so early positioning is sorry yeah so early positioning is uh, you know one of the way you can actually scan the stocks where you get to know how the starting open interest is for the newer stocks so this we will cover extensively uh, you know after the expiry to know how the expiry trends are for the stocks okay so right now if you would have understood this concept of long built up short built up okay uh, short covering long and winding the major take away would be to uh, especially if you are an investor the major take away would be to understand where the shorting is getting at its peak and where the reversal can happen because that can help you uh, you know end up making good money see right now what is happening is that the stock has rallied a lot Uh, i mean the stock market has rallied a lot so you may not necessarily see those opportunities right now but if you understand the concept uh, i'm very sure you know you'll keep getting such setups in fact you know there was one such uh, setup which was petronet uh, you know that got bashed up due to some uh, i think business expansion into unrelated area 
and you saw an open interest you know surging towards the highest point uh, ever since it has uh, been in fno market okay so that was a point that uh, you know you know that the prior low was not broken and this was you know some sort of a, a triangular pattern and this was possibly a throw over so and the open interest was very high and the other thing was the broader index which is the uh, bsc psu index is on a tear and it is rising so people would normally tend to do you know bargain hunt in such cases and and the moment you start seeing a drop in open interest uh, you know that's where you know that people are now you know possibly looking to cover their shorts and that can trigger a rally so so yes i mean so these are the kind of you know setups that you would want to look out for uh, and and expiry trends you know really help you to catch such uh, sort of trends and that is something that we will be uh, you know covering in our upcoming webinar when we do the stock uh, yeah absolutely the next webinar is next saturday where we'll be covering little bit of options but now whatever jay taught you okay on the open interest everyone is asking the same thing theek hai ye sab theek hai but kaun sa stocks dhoonde kaise dhoonde wo 28 after the uh, monthly expiry we will be able to take the session because that is where we will be able to give you better examples so 20 uh, you know we'll, we are we are scheduling uh, the month end expiry is on 25th so 27 that is saturday will be having the webinar so as usual we'll be sending you the whatsapp messages to everyone please do attend on 27th but the next webinar is on options where we'll be taking you through some of the oi insights of options as to how to liquidate how to find the highest over you know open uh, sorry open interest and uh, liquidation and addition okay so that will be on 14th Oh, sorry that will be on uh, 20th and uh, the next webinar will be on 27th so this is a three series webinar make sure you attend all the three or at least we'll be sending the recordings you can attend that so the next question is from okay uh, harsh agarwal harsh please you can unmute and ask uh, uh, good morning jay sir hi johan sir जी सर एक चीज मेरे को थोड़ा पूछना था कि अपन स्ट्राइक पे जो लिस्ट ऐड करते हैं अपने स्टॉक्स के हिसाब से जो अपनी वॉच लिस्ट रहती है हाँ. कैसा बनाना था थोड़ा एक मतलब एडिशन कैसे करना है स्टॉक्स से मतलब यहाँ पे आप जाके ऐड करके आपको जो भी स्टॉक चाहिए सपोज रिलायंस चाहिए जी तो आप आ, उसको आप टिक करिए रिलायंस को एंड टू वॉच लिस्ट तो ये आपके वॉच लिस्ट में आ जाएगा ऐसे टोटल कितनी वॉच लिस्ट सर कैसे बना सकते हैं हम नंबर ऑफ वॉच लिस्ट Uh, Chavan, the limit is fifty. Uh, 50... Limit is five, but we are increasing it to ten watch list. Each watch list you can add at least around hundred stocks. You can try it out. Okay. And sir, आप अगर थोड़ा HDFC Bank का please अगर निकाल सकते हैं चार्ट तो. Uh, okay. Actually, हाँ huh, HDFC Bank was also one interesting setup. Yes, sir, that's why. हाँ इसमें भी actually क्या हुआ है कि ये जो open interest है. that is probably at the highest ever since i think we have the data from 2012 so isme bhi kya hua tha ki there was this breakout that we had seen and in this decline basically a lot of open interest has added up yes sir yeah so isme you know important would be this range if this range gets broken on the upside mm -hmm. okay then there can be a good chance that people who have shorted in this phase they will end up you know covering their shorts and okay. that can actually trigger or fuel the rally on the upside sir ek ek cheez puchna cha raha tha isme jaise oi jo hai ye down jo niche ki taraf aaya hai matlab ye to sir agar niche aa raha hai iska matlab short ye jo long shorts jo the wo cover ho rahe hai na sir isme correct correct but fir bhi ye jo shorting hua hai theek hai uh -huh. this is probably from these sort of levels because yahan par bhi see when the stock is falling you are seeing a surge in open interest stock is falling you are seeing a surge in open interest stock has again fallen you are seeing a surge in open interest and okay. it is not just that ye jab bhi niche jata rehta hai tab log long bhi karte hai na ye hope mein ke upar jayega upar jayega ji sir so even 
ये मान लो कि आपने इधर लॉन्ग इधर कवर किया यू हैव टेकन दिस पेन जब ये इधर आता है तब यू एंड अप कवरिंग देयर कवरिंग योर पोजीशन राइट तो वो भी इसमें रिफ्लेक्ट होगा मतलब इवन दैट विल लीड टू यू नो ओपन इंटरेस्ट गोइंग डाउन ओके थैंक यू या थैंक यू ओके नेक्स्ट अप इज विपुल विपुल जी यू कैन स्पीक नाउ हेलो हाय जय या या Sir, I have questions. Two questions about the strike platform. So mm-hmm. yesterday I was trying to check the YTD winners, okay, in the hit maps. So if you go to the hit maps, NSE uh, total market, Nifty total market is there, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. It's all right. Down, niche, down. Niche, niche, niche. Yeah, yeah. Ha ha ha. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So in the Nifty total market, I was checking it from the March twenty twenty three onwards. Or so. Ne, a YTD becomes first of Jan. Correct, correct. So I was checking in the custom thing. So suppose this is the list, okay? Okay. Uh, you want me to do from March? Ha, March twenty twenty three. Okay. Ah, uh, ek se na March. March twenty three. एक्सेल so that is the reason why we are not allowing the download for excel to happen the rest of the things like scanners and all you can download in excel but this format it doesn't support so for example here just right click and export it to csv okay it will happen but whereas in heat map it doesn't support uh, the format so that is the reason why we are not able to uh, do it So okay. how can I do it? Otherwise, I mean, if I want to study like this, is there any? Ah, uh, we'll have to look into this. Okay. okay. Yeah. And we can add this in watch list, or that is also not possible. Yeah, you can add all uh, these stocks. Uh, so, for example, Jay, if you can go to watch list, please. Means I okay. Just delete them. all your watch list, Jay. Once we'll just show them. Yeah, uh, okay. Create a new watch list. Yes, you can just uh, create a new watch list. You have added here. Okay. For example, add items. Click on add items. Yeah, you can start uh, selecting over here. If you don't find the stocks over here, just search for the stocks. What you are looking at. So, for example, you are looking at. Uh, okay, just add these three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, yes. Now you want to add a stock called as Reliance. Just type Reliance. You will get it. Okay, now in this Reliance, what you are looking at? Reliance Industries. Okay, add to watch list. This is the way you can add. Then okay. how to use this watch list? Okay, just go to heat map. Okay, just go to watch list heat maps. Yeah, now you'll find all the stocks what you have added over here yeah, in the right. in your watch list. Okay. My question is the results which I got in that uh, hit map earlier, right? Can can I add those results into what watches uh, directly? That, that the UI we it's it's uh, not yet ready. We'll okay. be doing it. Sure, sure. And one more question is like uh, we have this sectors page, right? Where we can see the sector in the hit map only we can see the sectors, right? Yes. I know. So likewise, these sectors uh, do we have the industries also? If you can see like the railway, defense, those things. No, so that is actually we pull a different module that we would be working on. Ah, uh, you know, in a, in a near term, that would be sector analysis. Just me, ah, uh, what may happen is that you will ah uh, see all all the things you mm-hmm. know getting covered. Yeah, that is basically you know. Macro sector, sector, industry, basic industry. Okay, okay. So yeah, that is like a little. Uh, I mean, it may take a little time, but yes, I mean that will eventually come on the platform. Sure, sure. But, yeah. Okay. And Three. any specific features, if you wish to have, just go to help section. Yes, I have raised the request. 
Yeah, we'll we'll respond. But uh, right now, we are our whole team is busy on building some of the tools. Yes. Okay, and then you can raise a ticket over there. Uh, just go to help section J. Yeah. 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 And uh, here you can ask for the feature request. We'll definitely build. Okay. Anyways, one of the person is asking uh, Jay, um, how do I use your tool on expiry day and intraday? Okay. So see, on expiry day, uh, you will have rollover data. The uh, the see, this is the expiry report. So basically we have archived the uh, last 10 expiry reports in which you can get to know that what was the stock uh, expiry change. I mean, like how much the stock went up or down? What is the rollover cost? What is rollover? What is three month average one? What is six month average of that? And if you want to see something uh, like uh, visually, then you can also look at the chart and you can see the chart. So the chart over here that you see is purely expiry to expiry chart. Okay. And at the bottom, what you see is how the rollover has been uh, each expiry. And apart from that, uh, this one could also be useful to know how the early, how the open interest is at the start of new expiry. So, like I said, you know, this will be something that we'll be explaining on uh, 27th, 27th of Jan. Uh, so yes, and for uh, for now specifically, I mean, see what we are doing is that we are, uh, uh, I mean, we are updating this uh, screen on every five minutes, uh, you know, whenever we get the data. So far, we haven't put a time frame of hourly chart, okay, which which we probably intend to do uh, going forward. But uh, but yes, I mean that I mean so one hour will be the thing that I mean one hour breakup of the OI will be the thing that you will be able to see on an intraday basis. And and we'll need to see if you know further there is scope to go down or no. But uh, that is what uh, you know the plans are eventually. But uh, you know like Chavan also mentioned that there are many things that we are working on right now. Uh, but over here, you know, trying to bring an early uh, will be definitely something that we are considering and we are exploring the options. Okay. Uh, okay, next up is uh, Mr. Uh, Ajay Panchal. Yeah, uh, I have uh, uh, two uh, questions basically. One is that like uh, one takeaway from uh, this session is that you can identify highest open interest and uh, stock, uh, uh, the sentiments for the stock being on the very bearish side and uh, you can then take a position for uh, uh, bounce back and a new rally sort of thing. But how do we find uh, like given the current market condition where it is at the top, how do we find uh, the open interest setup uh, or what would be the open interest setup which we should look for to look at, uh, uh, you know, things turning bearish. Right. So, so like I said over here, uh, I mean, first thing, what you can probably see is that if the stock is say rising higher, okay. And if the open interest is at the highest point ever since uh, it has started trading, then that would be the first warning sign. Okay. The second would be that if the stock is rising higher, and if the open interest is down, okay. Now this could mean two things that earlier in the past, there was a lot of shorting and that's why you're seeing a short covering rally. Or there could also be a case that if there was a lot of long position that was there, you know, probably that also people are trying to unwind in this position. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I mean, I know it might look like a hindsight sort of thing, but I'll also try to share, uh, you know, show where we are seeing such things. Now you can see over here, the open interest over here was rising when the prices were rising. Okay. And this was the general trend you could see in the past, right? The prices were rising higher and the open interest was rising higher. It was at this second top where actually the open interest was declining. Okay. 
so that sort of then tells you that people are maybe you know trying to cash out from the stock and then it's only when you get the reversal and you see the open interest building uh, uh, you know rising higher so let us see how the open interest was from the top which it made over here so see over here this was the point where the open interest started inching higher right and then we had uh, seen this spike so like i said earlier also that if the open interest reaches uh, say somewhere in the low lowest point and then when the trend picks up and the open interest starts picking up so that could also be a warning sign that uh, you know people are now uh, shorting the stock now i'll give you one one example as well that when you see a stock like rec okay it has gone up a lot okay and there were the uh, there were these phases where you know there was excess long then in this consolidation the long got covered then again the stock rose higher and it uh, you know and the open interest went higher and now what we are essentially seeing this rally is you know sort of the open interest is going down now this could mean two thing okay people who have been long in this phase they are probably trying to cash out and now if the stock starts seeing correction and the open interest starts building you know that will be an indication that probably people are now trying to short the stock so if you see the open interest lower and the prices are at very high point okay uh, especially uh, you know after it has seen a runaway rally that could be a point of caution and you need to see if the oi starts building or no on the downside okay great that's a uh, uh, great it solves my doubt just one question is regarding uh, strike platform and the insider club now uh, i am not sure if we are member of insider club do we get access to uh, strike straight away or we have to no sir. Uh, no sir it is a separate subscription okay got it okay thanks thank you thank you okay next up is the uh, ravi jagwani um Hi, Chavan. Uh, my question is with regard to the uh, in the futures module. Uh, I can see uh, MWPL. This is market wide position limits. Uh, can you just elaborate on how do we use this module? So, see, this is actually getting updated on the EOD basis, and based on the EOD basis, uh, you know, if uh, the the MWPL it comes to stay around this point, okay. That is, it comes to around say ninety levels or so. I mean, eighty five, ninety levels or so. Then these are the possible stocks that can enter into ban. And if they enter into ban, that that means that you may not be able to take position once they are in ban. You, so if these are the stocks in ban, okay, it means that you can trade in these stocks only in intraday. and you cannot take a positional bet so in that sense these uh, sort of screen help you to understand like where the ban could go away okay i mean where uh, there is a probability of stock getting into ban and where there is a probability of stock you know which was supposed to come in ban but they are now now moving out so like you see sale over here okay it is in ban but there is a chance that it can uh, you know exit out of the ban period ban period so that is how the screen will help you uh, so uh, for each stock there is a separate ratio because here yeah. the poly cap which is at 139 so, 165 yeah so you can see all the stocks over here which i'm scro scrolling right now so so this is the current mwpl uh mr ravi yeah I, yeah i'm there i'm good yeah so i hope this solves it out okay yeah, i got that but i just want to possibly i'll check on the internet as to what is the mwpl for each stock and why does it go above 100 and no caps at somewhere around 90 yeah yeah so see there is a certain limit in which you can take position in a stock right i mean say i'm just giving you an hypothetical example okay if a company has 100 shares outstanding okay 
यू कैन नॉट शॉर्ट टू हंड्रेड शेयर राइट करेक्ट बिकॉज उतना तो है ही नहीं करेक्ट तो मार्केट ने आई मीन एन एस सी ने हैज गिवेन सर्टन लिमिट के बियॉन्ड विच इफ द पोजिशन गोज देन इट विल कम इन टू बैन सो एन एस सी डजेंट अलाउ पोजिशन टू गेट बियॉन्ड दैट पॉइंट एंड दिस एम डब्ल्यू पी एल इज बेसिकली कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ फ्यूचर ऑप्शन एंड एवरीथिंग it's actually some percentage of the free float of shares yes yes okay thank you thanks yeah. okay next up is uh, uh amit mr amit yes yes jay can you hear me yeah okay uh, so jay what i understand is that in both the short covering as well as the long under unwinding the open interest will come down is correct. that correct correct now uh, now uh, if there is scenario where there is a price movement but the open interest is constant uh, uh, is that a situation where we can interpret that there is a tussle between bull and bear and the market is not able to decide in the fno it it could be because of lack of sellers as well like say for example uh, see there can be two ways how the prices can go higher right one is on genuine buying uh, where there is a lot of demand and the prices go up and it's like ke sellers hai nahi wo stock mein okay and i say i i keep a share to sell at 20% circuit wo bhi one quantity and someone buys it and it becomes 20% higher right so it could be also because of that that there could be not much volume that could be happening or there would uh, or there would be not be much sellers uh, for that stock but the price uh, but the buyers are kind of uh, trying to bid the prices higher so it can happen due to lack of selling as well basically what i mean to say because this situation has recently happened in pvr uh, so if you can open the chart for pvr please so which phase you are talking about uh the last 15 days so actually what you see over here is a surge in open interest that means people are trying to short this stock and you are seeing a surge in open interest so what has happened over here probably what i sense is that this is like you said a tug of war between the bulls and the bears because over here maybe till this point there were longs over here there has been shorting okay and this pullback was majorly on the back of unwinding of the positions okay but what you see now is that the open interest is at elevated levels correct and right now what you are seeing is the shorts are again beginning to uh, you know uh, i mean the short momentum is again starting to take uh, the short is basically you know again getting back into picture what may end up happening is that people who are long over here they may end up unwinding their position and that may further force the prices down and the open interest may also come down probably so this is like a very important point and uh, see if i was i mean if i had to judge it technically i would keep this as my last hope that is the lower end of the channel if i think the prices break below this and it starts sustaining below that then maybe i would think that people who uh, would have been long around this point around this point you know where they have created long they would start unwinding their position because they may not be able to bear the losses does that answer your question amit because if you see the last phase here yeah at the same time open interest is also sorry i can't hear you your voice is very low can you hear me now a bit better yes okay so if you see the last phase the price is coming down but at the same time the open interest is also coming down it's starting to come down no so you can see over here that there is a slight surge in open interest right over here 
so that's where uh, you know like i mentioned there is sort of a tug of war that is going on between the bulls and the bears because this top say occurred somewhere over here so people would have formed long positions around this point right around this point so if maybe certain level breaks then there will be a panic among the buyers and then that may end up you know kind of unwinding their position and and you know that may also lead to basically long unwinding because over year what we had seen was a long built up and then shorts are over year as well so they would then probably get the momentum and the prices can come down this is what i'm uh, guessing but the contrary to that is that if the channel holds and the prices rise higher okay and say if there is say uh, a 20 day average or 50 day average and it crosses above that then maybe these these shorts will probably be forced to cover in that case the uh, in that case the open interest will come down and the price will go up so correct to, uh, correct covering rally so i think in either case the open interest will come down the only thing that we need to see is that whether there becomes a long unwinding or a short covering rally okay so my my question to you is that how do you benchmark the open interest that the open interest is at a at a high level i mean how do we benchmark that figure so no so there is frankly no way to benchmark it it is just that uh, that you see the historical data and you think that it is and you sort of take a judgment over there okay so is 12 months historical data a good enough indicator to to understand the open interest historical position no so that's why i am showing you the entire history okay so it is not just 12 month but if you get the entire history you get an even more better idea right okay yeah this is ever since 2017 this is the highest oi okay uh, jay if you can show them the subscription where to go and subscribe you know uh, yeah below the settings there's plans and billings you can go you can click and you can choose for 5 years it is 21672 uh, it is after it is including gst so if you are interested you can immediately subscribe uh, because this is uh, introductory offer which is expiring very soon so you can avail it for 5 years and 2 years if anyone is interested and after before we start raising the price so yeah how is strike better than charts which charts i charts okay see uh, we don't want to take out the name jairam but futures and options is just one part of our tool you know it is not our tool is not meant only for futures and options you know whereas our competitors i mean whatever names you are taking out you know we are already having those things but other than that there's sentiment indicators there's lot many things uh, lot many uh, and, things available and just one thing chavan just one yeah. thing chavan i don't think anyone has this open interest chart which is this clean for uh, you know last 10 to i mean 10 to 12 years and add to that you have all the flexibility that you want that uh, you know because this is trading view chart so you can also add a histogram to see i, I mean uh, we have put it as line but if you want you can also uh, put histogram or area chart or anything that you want okay mm -hmm. so and, and and i think the bigger thing in futures is that uh, no one has i think this kind of clean data for the last 12 years and apart from that there are a couple of unique screens in options as well which we will be covering in the next webinar yeah the only thing is we are on a 5 minutes delayed data right now which we are going to shift to either live data or one minute delayed data going forward next month but other than that we have the heat map sentiment we have the scanners which is not available anywhere i mean the sentiment indicators at least if you go through the video you will understand how important it is uh, you know that is where you know this is a very very important uh, module for someone who wants to really find the tops and bottoms in nifty and bank nifty 
if you see over here you know the moment it it comes it comes into oversold zones the market bottoms out the moment it comes into oversold zones you know uh, market tops out so you know yeah the video is over here in the help section you know if you want to understand okay what how to use this platform just go to the help section at the top uh, oh, yeah. yeah just go there you can find all the videos we are trying to upload more and more videos going forward in the next one month you will get a lot of videos on each and every tool available okay so do think over and please do subscribe everyone to two years and five years if possible that will really help us out we look forward to see you guys with associated with strike for a long period of time having said that the next question from sumit segal please unmute and you can ask yeah yeah hi jay uh, hi. jay just want to ask you in options have you made any changes in the screen uh, previously it used to show a graph the way the nifty graph is showing something like that and now it's only showing something else I on which page you are talking specifically so any stock if you go into let's say infosys or okay uh, reliance okay uh, you're in the options so options uh, chavan no we have disabled the options module because we are putting uh, putting in some more features so okay. just for a day or two it will be off uh, mr ravi oh, okay. sorry uh, yeah Sorry, Sumit. Yeah. All right. So I was actually checking it, so I could not find, you know, options. Yes, yes. Just give us a couple of days' time. By Monday or Tuesday, we'll be putting back all the features back. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is a discrepancy in OI short covering data. I just checked Tata Power. Uh, someone is saying Tata there is an yeah. Is there a problem in the data? Somebody is asking discrepancy in Tata Power. Not sure. I I don't think so. Okay. It will be because of the short covering. So you know you can also see uh, a detailed version of that in this, and you would see that you know since. A long time, you know, there has been a lot of short covering uh, that is happening over here. In fact, when you see the OI change over here, so it is short covering, short covering that is happening. So I don't think so because over here also you can see that the OI is matching with this point. And at the peak, it was at 115 million. So which was the date was 7 December. So 7 December. So somewhere over here, uh, hundred and sorry, it is hundred and fourteen, and you can see over here that this is that uh, I mean eleven crore forty lakhs. So I don't think there is any discrepancy, but there is actually a long uh, I mean that that is actually unwinding of open interest that has happened. Okay, next up is Mr. Chetan Jain. Uh, hello, hi Che and hi Shavan. Uh, my question is uh, towards, and I don't know, like I got disconnected due to internet issues. But whenever we, let's say, you know, uh, go to your uh, OI, so I'm sorry, uh, what was that? Uh, OI interpretation, right? right? And, you know, you select any chart on the right, right? So you have different uh, indicators like OI, then you have volume, delivery, what BAS, rollover, VAP, VVAP, and COC. So how do we yeah. interpret, let's say, you know, some of, and I, I don't know if you already caught my apologies for that. If it is already, then I may actually go back and- No, no, no. Recording. So it's not there. We actually have to, uh, you know, there's a video that is pending to record in this. So what okay. is COC is nothing but the cost of carry. Right. Okay. So cost of carry is nothing but your uh, spot minus future price. The way to interpret is mm -hmm. that if the cost of carry is very high, that means there is a lot of optimism amongst the participants, mm -hmm. right? And if the yeah. cost of carry is low, okay, which you yeah. see, say sometimes if you see in minus, so it could be because of two reasons. One could be dividend. If dividend is not the case, then there could be a lot of pessimism uh, among, uh, I mean, in that stock. 
and that is why mm -hmm. you are seeing a cost of carry negative so typically mm -hmm. what happens is that if you see a cost of carry negative you know somewhere around that time a bottom could be in place that is because there is a, a lot of pessimism that is around that stock or else what will mm -hmm. happen is that uh, the future prices and the cash prices will eventually normalize and even if the prices go down the futures price i mean the premium will come back and basis okay. is nothing but the absolute difference so cost of carry is the percentage basis is the absolute difference delivery over year what we have taken is the cash delivery so normally what we would want yeah. to see is that if the prices are rising higher if the volume is rising higher and the delivery is rising higher it means that people are mm -hmm. betting on that stock okay okay so that's yeah. how i mean these all indicators are there in fact you can even if you want to add rsi or something like that you can also add that yeah uh, that's that's where one of my request is like you know if i if i change uh, anything on my chart right let's yeah. say if i add rsi or something but then when i go to the next chart yeah yeah, yeah. so that is changed. something now chetan we are actually and working on because right now what is happening is that when we are saving the chart okay so yeah. uh, so when we are uh, saving the chart right now it gets saved only for that particular stock okay right. and we have to keep applying for that particular i mean if i say change it to overall then i'll have to again uh, you know go to the layout and change it exactly so, so that is something that we are working on okay uh, mm -hmm. so that you actually end up saving a template so the moment you apply that template and you do next 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 uh you would be able to see the chart so that is something that we are working on uh we had figured out this issue i mean i, I had seen this issue just a few days back so mm -hmm. we'll try to fix that okay um uh, one other thing was you know i am i've already raised a case about that uh, a request ticket uh you know couple of days back we were looking at let's say um, you know z entertainment okay and uh, the prices or you know uh, i think the call price i was i was looking at the options chain and the prices were not reflecting accurately okay uh, like uh, i think uh, the closing price was 10 rupees or something and you know it was showing as 3 no even if you look at we saw this ticket we wanted to respond but we are yeah. just taking our time chetan but if you look at okay. zero also there is some issue in this because it is illiquid okay mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, even if you look at zero the charts, you know on zero the it is showing us ten, but the closing price it is showing us three. On the charts it is mm -hmm. showing us ten. So there's some confusion. We are talking to NSC on this. We'll okay. verify. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Even the other platform it is showing the same issue. What you are able to see it uh, on our platform. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank Thanks. Thank yeah. Next up is Deepak Sharma. Mr. Deepak Sharma. Yes. Good morning. Carry on your good job. I had been listening to the conversation for last uh, half an hour or so. There are two questions. First of all, the strike uh, uh, in which uh, you find that Rohit momentum is not uh, updating the live chart because when the stock moves up and the Rohit momentum uh, it updates after five to ten minutes. Number one. and secondly i simply wanted to know about uh, the option trader about the sbi chart what uh, your uh, uh, what is your suggestion about sbi in the option trader these are the two questions so firstly uh, deepak ji uh, i mean see our, our i mean our data is 5 minutes late okay so every 5 minutes you would see prices and rmi changing i see Mm -hmm. uh yeah so i don't think there would be a case that uh, prices are getting updated and rmi is getting updated only later uh we will do observe it uh, tomorrow in the live market but as far as uh, our knowledge i mean as far as we know both things are uh, simultaneously getting updated okay and okay. Uh, coming to the second part i mean see we we frankly don't advise and we don't intend to do that Uh, this is something i mean the webinar that we had conducted was to understand the concept of op open interest and how you can actually apply to your analysis okay. how you read sbi chart in option trader this is simply wanted i don't want the advice now that's because what is the reading goes so 
I mean, option, I don't know. I, if I see the futures data, what I would see over here. So, you know, it is getting into that phase, uh, at least in the near term, where if you see over here, okay, there is shorting that is happening on a higher open interest. Later on, there is a short covering. Currently, we have again seen uh, some shorting from the top and we need to see if there is, uh, you know, further more short covering that can come by because if you see based on the price action, I think it would be at a lower end of the channel and it is trying to bounce back. Okay. So I would, I would think that if there is a breakout from this channel, then there could be further more up move that can be visible in SBI. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, if at all there is say a resistance, uh, you know, somewhere at higher levels and it is not able to take out the previous stop, then you could see some sort of corrections and, you know, even OI going down. But honestly, when you look at the OI, you don't get, uh, you know, much of an insight for now because this is largely, you know, sort of stuck in a range. And there are this random moves that are happening where, you know, sometimes there is long, uh, then in the shorts, the open interest rises. Then when the covering happens, the open interest goes down. And this is what seems to be happening right now. Yeah, you suggest the short covering is happening as if, as if right? So, uh, so short covering had happened over here. Uh, I mean, when this rally had happened, there was a short covering. Okay. Now over here, in this case, people have built short. Okay. So mm -hmm. if this channel is broken on the upside, then maybe you would see a short covering rally, but if that doesn't happen, then maybe right now, uh, the trend seems to be suggesting that people are shorting the stock. Say, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, next question, Vijay, Vijay Singh, you can unmute and you can ask your question. You're there, Vijay. Okay. We'll move to the next question from Dave. Yeah, Dave, uh, please unmute and ask. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. I have one question regarding the correlation between the open interest and the volume in cash market. And if any diversion will help to identify the trend and uh, in this regard? I have not really observed that very closely, frankly. Okay. But any correlation in open interest and cash volume? I don't think so. I mean, because I have not observed, I won't be able to comment on it. Okay. But normally, yeah. I mean, open interest does tend to uh, help you to get a fair idea. So, I mean, I haven't gone and then seen if, you know, cash volumes are affecting it or, you know, frankly. So, you know, open interest has been good enough thing for me to understand what is really happening. And this particular open interest which you are showing is only on future, not of option, combine no. of option and future. This is combine of one month, two month, three month, but this is okay. only futures and not options. But there can be a, means you can say, diversion in uh, option data and uh, future data, means uh, selling in future and buying in options, certain kind of things. I don't know, but frankly, when I have seen this and I have been trying to, uh, you know, try to, you know, catch the stock based on the theory, which I had, uh, you know, just explained. So I honestly did not feel the need to go to options and check it. Okay. So you can uh, ca track the future data and take your position. Yes. That is sufficient. Yes. And uh, just seeing that uh, on your current uh, this thing, the uh, webinar, Navin Flora chart, uh, the open interest is going higher and higher. Which one? Uh, Navin Florin? Yeah. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. So see, over here, basically what is happening is that 
you are seeing some bit of divergence hmm. wherein the open interest has gone up okay but this low has not broken yeah in fact if this low doesn't break there could be a case of a short covering as well that can come by yes okay and i just add to delivery volume if any I... yeah yeah sure i will you have that yes so in fact yes if you see the selling that seems to be happening based on the back of some delivery pickup as well. Mm. So you need to be careful in such cases. And, and I would believe if you go to Navin Florin and check the monthly chart, it is probably at a very crucial level. I had seen the stock just a few days back. Wait, yeah, Rose, I also checked that it is so see, if you see over here, here if you see over here, it is at the lower band and the 40 month average. Okay. Mm. And this 40 month average has not been breaking uh, ever since I think 2012. Yeah, yeah. That's why we So if that point. breaks, then open interest high, which you're seeing right now, mm. might not really be high. And in fact, the stock can tank and the open interest can further go up. Okay. So that thing can happen. So that's why, like I said, uh, you know, always combine the technical with this yeah. and just don't, uh, you know, rely on uh, this part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, next up is Puneet. Puneet? Hello. Yeah. Yes, I wanted to ask Punjab National Bank and Canada Bank open infrastructure. So you can see over here that the open interest is on the lower side, uh, especially for PNB Bank. Okay, so it would mean then that you that people are more or I mean, like they are mostly neutral on the stock and you need to see which way the open interest starts building. If there is a directional move. So say, for example, if PNB is rising higher and if the open interest still is falling, then uh, it would just mean that, uh, you know, people might be short earlier and they would be unwinding it. But uh, if it rises higher and the open interest is lower, then you need to be a little careful, especially if the prices go down and the open interest starts rising higher. Okay. So as of now, looking at the open interest, it doesn't suggest anything, but the price is telling you that the trend is up. And when we look at can bank, which is Canada bank. to so see, there has been very strong long built up, which was seen over here. Okay. And, and since then, you know, it has been, uh, I mean, open interest has been at higher levels only. Now, when we look at the short term part, To see more or less, I think this is what seems to be happening that, you know, sometimes people are shorting over here, then they are going long and again, they are shorting and they are going long and they are, they are covering their short position and those all things are going on. But the broader thing is that the people who have, uh, you know, created long over here, they seems to be a strong hand there and they are still not getting out. So, uh, the thing basically to watch out for be, will be that as long as the reversal doesn't occur. You know, you may see such sort of stuff happening that if Canada Bank goes down, you will probably see a spike in open interest. And then again, when it starts rising higher, you will see open interest going down and so on. And it may keep doing that until you don't see a break breakdown of open interest or something like that. Like see if this is a breakdown of open interest or if there is a big break breakout on the open interest. Until those things doesn't happen, I think the prevailing trend can continue and there can be, you know, these sort of sideways thing that can happen in open interest and the prices may keep rising higher because the prevailing trend is up. Okay.
सो विजय यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन विजय सिंह ओके एंटी वाई Hi. Thanks, Shivan, and thanks, Jay, for covering such a nice analysis and uh, demonstrating this tool. I have. Uh, I want to look at the open interest of uh, Adani Enterprise. If you can do that, please. Yeah. And another question was, you know, is there a way uh, we can identify or link the volatility with this uh, open interest, or like what we saw in Nifty, like you know, volatile moments? so maybe one thing that i can think of is that uh, say if the volatility is very high okay say uh, for example the wix is at 40 i mean normally it is at 40 okay and if the wix is at 70 or 80 or something like that and you see a very high open interest and the stock has fallen that would tell you that there is an extreme bearish uh, sentiment that is there in the stock and maybe you would want to wait for a reversal to happen that is what i can think of uh, if we have to link the volatility and the open interest uh andy you're on mute in case if you're talking Uh, you're there, Andy. Thanks, thanks, thanks sir. Uh, can you can you just cover the uh, the chart of Adani Enterprises, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just have a look. So see what happened over here was that uh, I think this sharp rally was on the back. see all i can say right now is that the open interest is at the lowest point okay i mean it is like back towards its average where it used to be and you need to see which way the open interest starts building if at all there is a trend okay the minor trend that i can see right now is that the adani stock the adani enterprise is rising higher and the open interest is rising higher okay but there would be a meaningful uh i think pick up maybe if the high is broken and you can say that over here the open interest you know where the resistance area is you know if that also breaks out and it rises higher so that can probably say that people are now getting interested into the stock but because this open interest is around the lowest point it would mean that uh, you know possibly people are neutral to a bit bullish on the stock in the near term i i hope that answers your question uh, andy okay so i think uh, chavan we have covered all the questions we can probably wrap up this okay i think we have we'll take a last question uh, yeah. rahul hi yeah, hi, hi chavan and uh, jay uh, thank you so much uh, it's been a wonderful session uh two things that i wanted to understand uh, one if you could just pick up one example like you spoke about on the uh, you know when the stock is on down and on the reversal you see a long side can we see an example on the short side when the stock is on really high and how do we interpret when it is about to get you know probably hammered and uh, with that if you can also look into dlf uh, as an example or a godrej where the real you know real estate entire segment has been bullish stock has been making new high and with open interest is it really too high uh, at the moment and how do we interpret that yeah so first to your example i mean you can see see imagine that uh, you did not had uh, the past of muthut okay then what you would see is that at this point actually the open interest was at the highest right compared to its history so what it would mean is that over your people are very uh, bullish about the stock and eventually you know when we saw the unwinding uh, happening and then there was the break of the support levels so the entire uh, you know that long build up which was seen people were covering their shorts 
So I think I can relate to this example when you ask me that what happens if the open interest is very high and, and what happens next. So you can see Muthur chart over here. Now specifically uh, coming to your query on DLF. Let us see the chart. So in DLF specifically, we are not really seeing, uh, you know, any major exuberance on the, uh, actually, uh, OI side. It is, uh, I mean, it is just behaving normal. I will need to see if any other, uh, you know, real estate stock are seeing a uh, euphoric move or something, especially on the derivative front. I think uh, Godrej Properties was the one where there was a lot of short. Mm, no. If we look at Obroy. Obroy. Yeah, so Obroy has a relative high open interest, you know, compared to its past. And especially in the near term, if we see. So at this peak, the open interest was at the highest, but now when the up move is coming over here, the open interest seems to be reducing. So does this mean that the people who were long are cashing out? You know, that is something that we kind of need to see and monitor on an ongoing basis. So imagine that from your say overall reality, uh, you know, started reversing and you start seeing a surge in open interest, then that means now people are trying to short this stock and you need to be then careful. So in the real estate name of whatever you spoke, I think only overall reality is the one where there is a lot of uh, activity happening in the futures compared to the past. Rahul, does that answer your question? Uh, Raul, you're there. You're on mute. I was not able to get. And yeah, I think host has done it now. Yeah. Jay, my follow up question to that is uh, you know, while the price has gone up, so generally, as you say, it, with the surge in price, either thing will happen. Either the open interest will go high or a low. But in case of DLF, if it is almost stagnant, but the price is one side moving on the northward direction, what does it mean then? So see, it could be the case that in option something is happening. At least in futures, we are it is not visible. So okay. maybe in options you might need to see. But uh, if I had to see if any of the real estate stock are in euphoric phase, uh, hmm. maybe I would want to put uh, Obroy, but like I said earlier as well, I mean, this is just two years of data, right? Maybe I don't know it, if it can be a very good judgment point, but I will be a little careful on this part because what I see over here, because something very similar, I mean, this is not to say that it will end up being like a polycap, but somewhat similar situation was in polycap where imagine if you had not seen this point. Okay. This is what was happening. I mean, it happened over here and yeah. when there was a new up move, the open interest was going down. And then when the open interest, sorry. And then when the open interest, I mean, when then the prices started going down, open interest started surging. Okay. So that's why I will be a little more careful on Obroy because of, you know, such kind of pattern that is seen and it Understood. would be that, uh, you know, people could be cashing out. Okay. This is helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Guys, uh, with this, let's end this webinar. It's already uh, two and a half hours. Uh, my request is go to strike, sign up, start using and do subscribe, you know, uh, it will really help us in growing the platform even more better and bigger. Uh, we'll be the, you know, we, our, our intent is to make sure that we become the Bloomberg for retailers, give as much information as possible, which will 
actually help you in taking decisions in the market whether you are a trader or investor that is the end goal not to just blindly build platform the end goal is helping you in taking decisions so uh, keep using strike you know you can please spread the word on strike i'm sure we have the best ui ux today in india if you compare us with any other platforms uh, we wish to make this even more better a uh, lot of features are coming up including alerts rrg that is the relative rotation graphs uh, developed by julius d kemper we are building the phase 2 of options and futures model where we are going to concentrate on intraday data we are shifting our platform to 1 minute delayed five, from 5 minutes and uh, of course uh, we are going to build a lot of scanners including uh, combo scanners where like you can only create your own scanners uh, with the query which uh, will be very robust it will be a combination that will be a combination of not only for fundamental but also technical and also price so in that way we are trying to build a query where you can create your own scanners uh, we are going to create a market space a marketplace where you can share your scanners watch list of course portfolio analysis is already a part of it so our next one year of plan is already in in place uh, big big modules coming up and i'm sure this is going to bring a lot of value and if you see value to it do subscribe for a longer period of time 2 years 5 years that would be very very helpful for us also so i would leave I, i'll leave the decision to you guys but do subscribe i'm sure we'll uh, do our best with this thank you so much i hope you got some value and next saturday is the second series of this webinar where we'll touch base upon options and the most important is rollover analysis which we can do after the contract gets over uh next saturday uh, probably at the uh, same time 10 am we'll have the webinar you will get the uh, details on your emails registered emails on strike and also whatsapp we'll send the uh, other uh, the details so yeah that's it thank you guys i hope you got a lot of value and uh, do subscribe once again please thank you have a good day and we'll post the recordings of today's session also